Hey guys, it's Flower Friday, and this is a bit of a different one. Today we're going to be talking about flowers that make good companions for your vegetables. Now, I've got my book here in the garden with me. Let me know in the comments if you have my book and what you think of it. You guys did such a great job last year when the book came out in March, sending it immediately to Amazon's number one bestseller list. And it's actually still, I think, at number five, if I'm not mistaken, in vegetable gardening. And that's due to you guys. So the book is Companion Planting for Beginners, and there's a lot of ideas in there in terms of uh, specific plants to pair with uh, certain vegetables, certain vegetables to pair with other vegetables, flowers, things like that. Lots of detail. So we're not going to get into that much detail on this video. I will put a link to the, the book down in the video description. So I'm going to go through and talk about certain flowers that I love that I have planted here in the garden. And right now it we it's May, so we're kind of, and it's 2023, so we've had a, it's still cool. So all of my cool season uh, flowers are still blooming, and the warm season ones either haven't been started yet or it's just barely coming up. So we'll go through the cool season flowers first, since I can kind of show you what they look like right now and what I've got them growing near, and then I'll give you a list of things to have your eye out for seeds or transplants from the garden center that'll take you through the summer. And since we're sitting here in front of the nasturtiums, we'll start there. Nasturtiums are not only beautiful for the garden, but they are a great trap crop for aphids. Aphids will go and get on your nasturtiums rather than other plants that you want to harvest. Uh, a big one for me at this time of year or a little bit before cool season would be brassicas. How many of you, show of hands, or leave it in the comments, have your brassicas, which are cabbages and broccoli and cauliflower. They're always getting aphids, right? So if you plant nasturtiums about 10 feet away, it could draw those aphids over onto your nasturtiums rather than some of your brassicas. Right here behind me, we've got two great ones. Number one is sweet alyssum. And sweet alyssum uh, it is actually scientifically proven. They did a study and it actually deters aphids when it's planted next to lettuce. So it's a great companion plant for lettuce, but sweet alyssum also attracts hoverflies. Now hoverflies are those little, they kind of look like miniature bees, but they're flies and they hover and they eat a lot of sucking insects. So any insect that's going to suck the juices out of your plant, they're going to find and kill and eat. Not necessarily the adults, but their larvae are voracious predators of all the small sucking pests in your garden. Now, I've got chives here flowering, and the flowers of chives aren't necessarily uh, what the companion planting is for. They're just a happy byproduct. But chives are a great thing to plant around things like carrots. If you have carrot fly, the carrot fly can find your carrots by smell. And planting something smellier than carrots, like chives or any other allium, around your carrots are going to protect them from carrot fly. Now there are broad types of flowers that uh, bring in beneficial insects to the garden. The first kind are umble flowers, and that is flowers that are shaped like an umbrella. Really, they're a bunch of flowers shaped like an umbrella, hundreds of flowers in one umbrella shape. Dill is one of those. Fennel is another one. Parsley is another one. If you have some extra carrots that you can let go to flower, those are umble flowers as well. Umble flowers attract parasitic wasps, ladybugs, hoverflies, all great beneficial bugs for your garden. Now those are annuals, but yarrow is something you can plant, or achillea, same plant. They are great umble flowers that will come back every single year and they'll bloom for a really long period of time. The next type of flower is a daisy type flower. Now there's tons of daisy type flowers. Everything from calendulas to shasta daisies to zinnias, cosmos, even sunflowers. And all of these have this outer ring of petals, but in the middle, are tons and tons of tiny little, uh, almost like flowers. And those are gonna attract not only the beneficial insects, but pollinators like bees and butterflies as well, because all of those little 
flowers in the center are all nectar points. All of these type of flowers attract lacewings, big-eyed bugs, and parasitic wasps. Now that sounds super scary, but they're super tiny. They don't hurt you. But what they do is they can actually pierce the skin of a, of a pest. And we're talking about like stealthy, like leaf miners that you can't even get to because they're between the leaf layers. They can pierce that bug that's the leaf miner through the leaf and suck out its insides, killing it. So always make sure to have plenty of daisy type flowers. Open center dahlias, that's another good one. All right, let me talk a little bit about some perennials and then we'll talk about the warm season flowers. Lavender is one of my favorite plants, but it also happens to be a favorite of lots of beneficial insects and pollinators. They provide cover for big eyed bugs, assassin bugs, ground beetles, and of course the flowers attract hummingbirds and bees and butterflies. It's just an all around great plant to have. Plus it either blooms almost all the time in an environment like ours, or it comes back every year. Thyme is another perennial Mediterranean herb that will handle all the same bugs as lavender. The beneficials that are attracted to thyme will take care of caterpillars, aphids, mites, and whiteflies. It's a really great plant to have growing near your strawberries because they're both perennial and they're both low growing. All right, let's talk for a minute about the warm season flowers. Now, as soon as someone hears about a companion planting, they think marigolds, right? And it's a great plant, but not quite as great as most people will have you believe. Marigolds are said to be the be all end all of companion planting and really, there's not a lot of claims for that, at least scientifically. However, if you have root knot nematodes, they are very beneficial, but not as a companion plant. They are beneficial as a cover crop. So you plant very thickly marigolds all over the area that you have root knot nematodes, and then you till all of those marigolds into the soil and leave it. It's kind of like a biofumigant. And then a couple weeks later, you'll plant your crops right into that. Now, there are a couple of good uses for marigolds as well as companion plants. They do attract hoverflies. And the smell, again, is used to confuse pests. So they could be planted in the place of chives, for instance, to keep the carrot fly confused and not be able to find your carrots. Another warm season um, annual that uses scent as a means of companion planting or in companion planting is basil. Now the flowers on basil attract bees like there's, there's nothing else I haven't found that really attracts bees like basil flowers. And so I will grow purple basil and allow it to go to flower. You don't wanna do that with your green basil for cooking because uh, as soon as it goes to flower, the leaves turn bitter. So I grow purple basil just for the bees, but I always, and I did a whole video on this last year, I always plant a row of green basil in front or next to my tomatoes. Not because it makes the tomatoes taste better, as some people will say. It does not. There's no scientific evidence for that at all, and really no means of that happening. However, the smell of the basil keeps away the moth that lays the eggs that become the dreaded tomato hornworm. I've been growing basil next to my tomatoes for about five years. Never once have I had a tomato hornworm. Last year, I had an entire row of basil up here in front of my tomatoes, and I did not get a tomato hornworm, at least there. Over on the other side of the property, I had filmed something for School of Traditional Skills. We built a raised bed there and planted tomatoes. Didn't even think about planting basil with them. And guess what? They were covered in tomato hornworms. Never over here. All last year, even when those were over there covered, these had none. So plant basil with your tomatoes. Not only do they smell great together, they're going to keep those hornworms away. Zinnias are another flower that attract parasitic wasps. And parasitic wasps will use that little beak thing to puncture the skin of leaf miners, white flies, aphids, all those little sucking insects that we all hate and just suck their insides right out, killing them, right? So plant lots of zinnias. Cosmos as well, same thing. Now some climates don't get 
hot enough for zinnias, you can grow cosmos. Um, or if you can grow them both, definitely grow them both. They're both beautiful. They last so long. Cosmos, I think, are probably the longest lasting flower in my garden. So this has been a bit of a different type of flower Friday. Uh, maybe one that more of you are interested in than growing dahlias and roses and all of those. But we'll be back with those next week. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Share it with a friend. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.